Hello and welcome. You're watching NDTV now on YouTube. I'm Sonal Merotra Kapoor and this is the top story segment where every morning on Good Morning India, I give you five stories to vote on and the ones that get maximum engagement from you is what you and I discuss here on our YouTube channel. The polls are today telling us that it is about the Citizenship Amendment Act one more time. 73% of you have wanted to know about the petitions, a bunch of 60 petitions which are now being heard in the Supreme Court. And apart from that, all the other stories as well talk about the Citizenship Amendment Act, which has pretty much been the one thing which is on everybody's mind since Sunday, in fact, from the time the violence took place on the streets of the capital and that led to a spill-off effect all over the nation, internationally as well now. This resistance against the Citizenship Amendment Act has now, many are saying, become the single largest resistance of any policy of Modi government that we've seen in the country so far. The most powerful resistance we've seen so far. What happens to it, we don't know. But today is a defining day. Why? Because the next step and the only way forward, really, legally speaking, is going to be if the Supreme Court weighs in on this. And a bunch of a record 60 petitions, 60 petitions filed independently, all taken up together by the Supreme Court, were heard today here in the country's top court. It was a three-judge bench which was headed by Justice, uh, the CGI, Justice Bobri. Now, uh, these people, 60 of them, some are from the Congress Party, some from the TMC. There are student bodies from Assam, student bodies from other parts of the country. And we looked into all these 60 petitions and found out that 59 of them are against the Citizenship Amendment Act. There is one petition in this which has been filed by a BJP supporter who talks about some violence that took place and is thus for it. So all of these clubbed together is what the Supreme Court is going to look at. In fact, just breaking news coming in right now and all the updates available on NDTV.com is that Supreme Court uh, has now issued a notice to the government on the act and will take up all the petitions challenging the validity on the 22nd of January. This means that Supreme Court has taken cognizance of all these reports and now on the 22nd of January is when they'll be listening to all of them together and also they have issued a notice to the centre which is pretty much procedural. It does not mean anything, uh, does not reflect on what the verdict is going to be at all, has no repercussions on that. It is simply inviting the government to ensure that they are present in court and they bring their point of view on this since I said 40, 59 of them out of these 60 are actually against the act. So that's where the case stands. This has become very significant. Why? Because while there are protests happening legally, it has been passed in both the Houses of Parliament, become an act after the, after the President of India gave it its assent. So that's that. It is, it is an act as we live with it now but and will be enforced as and when the government notifies it. At the moment, the only door ahead and the only way forward for anybody resisting this act is the Supreme Court, thus all focus is there. Meanwhile, agitation on the ground continues, some violent, some democratic, some by student bodies, others by political leaders. And that is, that is basically, if you could look at the big picture here, the protests that you have seen on the ground when it comes to Citizenship Act have been threefold. And I'm going to explain all these three to you today. The first set of protests that came in is even before it had passed the test in the parliament. That was from, and I've explained to you this in our earlier uh, YouTube our programs as well in the broadcast where we talked about why there was a disparity between what Assam was doing and what the opposition was doing. But let me recap this entire thing for you. The first set of opposition and protest came in from the Assam unit and from all the northeastern states who were against the entire act altogether. They said, not Muslims, not Hindus, we do not want citizenship giving uh, to be given into all these people coming in from the neighboring cities because they eat up on our opportunities here in the state. They were against it. Assam was violent, was vehemently against it for, for days and months really. But there was peacemaking talks, there were changes made into what all states in Assam will be included under that and there it seems to be 
some in a way there is calm there now uh, this morning we know that curfew has been relaxed and broadband also came back in assam yesterday meghalaya we were told in shillong is where uh, the uh, curfew was not relaxed and there continues to be a situation of tense but it is being watched out so while that one out of the three that's number one well that set of protest seems to be coming down and there seems to be more in a way acceptance at this point and no violence at least at the moment well let me revise that let's not call it acceptance because currently there are students democratically protesting even in guwahati so that's that number 2 out of these three sort of protests that we've seen has been from the opposition parties here in the center talking about how it is it nr the act citizenship act clubbed up with nrc is completely anti minority anti muslim anti dalit anti anybody who is poor in the country who does not have enough papers to go and prove their nationality and thus it will be really hard on them and that's what you see the political parties protesting against mamta banerjee for example today is the third day when she'll be carrying out a protest march in kolkata along with all her mlas she's constantly been saying that nrc and caa will only go through her dead body in the state if uh, that were Kerala is also against it. There are some other states which are also talking about that they will not be implementing it in their states. Basically, opposition states we are talking about. Number three, and one which has been a sort of unifying factor, one protest and one cause which has really unified the country, has been what happened at Jamia and the violence that was unfolded on students inside the library on Sunday evening. that has now galvanized a student movement across the world really at this point we are not just talking about some 10 20 universities and colleges here in the country we are talking about yale we are talking about oxford cambridge all of whom at this point are saying this is not my india this is not what we stand for let me uh, talk to you about that this is the letter that came in from the oxford Oxford solidarity statement against police action on Indian students protesting the new citizenship law. Let me just read that out for you. It says we the students scholars and alumni of University of Oxford are in solidarity with the students exercising their fundamental right to dissent and protest across India. We condemn the violence unleashed on students at Jamia, Aligarh, Delhi University, Cotton University in Assam and other educational institutes. the use of police force against students exercising their fundamental right to protest in university spaces and elsewhere is a direct attack on the foundations of the democratic society we demand an immediate end to all forms of violence against protesting students and call for accountability of those responsible over the last week we've seen peaceful protest demonstrations across the country against the citizenship amendment act the act and this is important what they're saying the act according to them stipulates preferential treatment to religious minorities from pakistan bangladesh afghanistan in the process of acquiring indian citizenship while explicitly excluding muslims from its purview this explicit and blatant exclusion of muslims from citizenship appends the long standing fundamental ideals of equality liberty pluralism and secularism and uh, secularism enshrined in our constitution of india we lend our support in the voice and support in the fight against this immoral and unconstitutional law and call for its immediate withdrawal some strong words said coming in from oxford scholars there and students who have joined in there was a protest also that was carried out and uh, students from here there were i mean this has never really happened where for a cause here in the country students even abroad who are studying in international universities in these ivy leagues uh, have protested this is happening all because of the citizenship law so that pretty much breaks down for you all the three causes for protests at this point now let's talk about the fallouts of these three causes in different forms of protest that we have seen the major fallout like i said has been about the brutality that was faced by jamia students the face of that has become this man over here this boy 26 year old who's a final year llm student was studying for his mphil for his exam in the mphil section of the library on sunday and today as we speak his hands are fractured he has lost an eye his cornea ruptured 
his eyesight completely gone. The other one has to be now looked into and surgically brought back. What is it that he said? And all these details are on NTTV.com as well. He talks about how he was preparing for his exam and sitting inside the, inside the library when police barged in. There was tear gas shelling, there was lati charge. He was in the toilet and police, he believes, uh, he says, got into at least 20 to 25 fully armed policemen in riot gear and wielding lathis. They burst in and starting beating everyone with lathis, he says. They hit me too. They hit me on the hand, fractured my finger and then on the eye. I tried to run away. I hid in the toilet where I fell bleeding unconscious. I'm studying. I was studying in the central library. There is an ample section there. We were told cops have entered the library. Then we were sitting between 20 to 25 fully armed policemen with helmets and lathis who burst in and started beating everybody up. I was lying there in the bathroom bleeding. Some friends took me to the hospital. I was referred to Ames Trauma and later to an eye, special, uh, eye speciality hospital as well. Now imagine this boy who was studying for law sitting inside that library who's now going to see with only one eye if uh, that is if that was to be saved at this point uh, and he says he was just studying he was sitting there when the police barged in and they beat up these kids so the more and more of these stories and horror stories are really coming out from the campus that is obviously getting in more response from the ground as well at the moment the other aspect we've seen the spill-off effect like i said in other universities now look at this is what happened in Chennai University yesterday, where these were the pictures, uh, where students, you can see that. Students inside the Chennai University had a sit-down protest. They sat there through the night. When the police came in and tried to remove them, they resisted. And in that resistance, several one of them were hurt. Some of them have been booked as well. But they continued to say that this is not a protest that they will be calling off immediately. At the moment, we know that uh, Madras University has, uh, along with three other universities in that state actually, has called an early vacation and said that there will not be no more studies on the campus because of these protests. But these students, they refuse to leave. They refuse to leave even this morning. And I, uh, we had a live broadcast with Sam Daniel, whom you can see in this report as well. And he was talking to students via the main gate. Media is not allowed inside, so they just put in their hand inside the gate and they were interviewing students and the students there said, well, let them call it a vacation, but we are not leaving just yet. There was a huge amount of police force there, so, there as well. So that's the aspect of what's happening in the universities today as well. We know in Delhi University there are protests being called out. Uh, there is a protest in Goa and there are several other places in Mumbai as well where they are protesting. So pretty much it's going to be a pan-India show even today. But uh, another story that has uh, been a sort of a tense area here in the capital where things got violent uh, were yesterday in the East Delhi region where in Silampur and uh, there was, let me just show you those visuals over here. Yeah, so Silampur and Bridgepuri, that was the visual yesterday. Uh, both of these places in East Delhi. So we are told at this point that it started out as a regular protest, huge protest with a lot of participation from the local leaders in Silampur. It started at actually 10 a.m. in the morning, but around 2 p.m. or so, when they received police resistance and the police said you cannot march any further, that's when things escalated, it got violent, but buses were broken, the windscreens were smashed, several of the two-wheelers and four-wheelers parked on the roads were burnt. There was an area outside a police booth, not a police station, or a smaller police booth that you see in several intersections, that was burnt and the diet uh, control police, the RAF had to be called in, P Delhi police used drones, etc. and videographed the entire incident to understand what had went, gone wrong. And later in the evening in East Delhi, in two of those areas getting tense, they did something special. Delhi police indulged with the community. What they're calling is a peace community. They called in leaders, respectable voices in the area, sat down with them and said, tell us what your problem is and we'll resolve it. And it is at the outcome of that peace meeting that today morning things are calm. Today morning, both in Silampur and in Bridgepuri, a situation is back to normal. While police seems to be on standby, the riot action for the rapid action force, which is the right control police, has been moved out of the area. Schools are functioning, shops are open. 
people are out on the streets. But uh, just minutes back, we actually got some report from North East Delhi saying that Section 144 has been enforced there. Uh, so North East Delhi, Section 144, for those of you who don't understand, is a prohibitory order which says not more than five people can gather at any one place. This is generally enforced as a precautionary measure by Delhi, by any police for that matter, to ensure that situation does not get out of hand. So probably uh, what we are uh, guessing at this point is that there was a big protest called in there as well and to ensure that it does not go out of hand they have enforced section 144 so we wait and watch what happens next so while the situation is not tense it is effort it is calm at the moment it still remains to be a cause of concern and we are watching out very carefully of what happens here in the capital as well so like we said this is uh, not the last we've heard on the story so far we also know that today morning mayavati went up to the president and talked to her about the citizenship act said that it's an anti-minority she's also against it at this point yesterday some 14 opposition parties had also gone to the president and said that please do something this is not what india wants uh, another quick point i want to tell you when it comes to the act has been that there was a lot of anger on social media on Bollywood not participating, Bollywood not speaking up for the rights of the students, for those who were beaten up and also against the act. Several of those Bollywood actors also who have studied at Jamia, uh, creatives there who were here in Jamia as well. And after a lot of that backlash, we actually now finally see Bollywood reacting much, much more from last evening or so. I've been looking at tweets from people like Farhan Akhtar, from Mahesh Bhatt, um, Mukesh Bhatt and a lot of other uh, people as well, mainstream actors as well, like Ayushman Khurana, like Tapsi Panno, and all of them saying that what is happening is not right and that the voice and the time to remain silent has gone. So lots really happening and this is, like I said, the single largest resistance to any policy of Modi government we've seen in the country so far. How will it culminate? culminate? Where will it go forward from here? Will the activists in this case or those resisting it managed to get some justice, managed to press upon and compel the Modi government to take action. What will the court decide on this? All that is something that we are keeping a very close eye on. For the moment, thanks for watching. You can uh, stay tuned to our YouTube channel for all the details. All the details are available indeed on NDTV.com. And also you can keep watching the latest on NDTV 24-7. Bye for now.